All right, our recording has started. Welcome to the FireNet Dispatch Center Workshop for 2023. I am Tara Hartman with the FireNet team, and I have been going to quite a few general meetings. Um, don't apologize for our hardworking puppies. Um, so those are, <laughs> that's Tucker, the original. And then these are my new babies, uh, Piper and Palmer. So they're my, I rescued them. All right, this will be a recording, um, will be under training and then dispatch center setup. So this will be available. Workshop overview. We're gonna talk about some FireNet updates and reminders, requesting an account and sponsorship, signing in, your recommended setup for the dispatch center. We're gonna talk about shared inbox delegation, account requests and sponsorship, incident life cycle, post incident and training opportunities. So FireNet updates and reminders. So just a reminder, we do have our authority to operate. So we are working under guidelines based on the fact that we allow non federal users into our system. So those two things that impact our users are the sign on every 18 hours. So it is set up so that if you sign off at the end of the day, when you sign back on, you'll get a full shift of 18 hours. So that won't break up your day at all. And then signing on every 60 days. So we do have folks that will be in the system, you know, working as an AD or expanded or something temporary. And as a rule, that account just kind of dies out and those are deleted. Reminder that shared accounts are not approved in FireNet. So we all get named accounts. We don't need to share them. The collaborative tools that we're using right now are mostly SharePoint, Microsoft Teams and Outlook. And then we are seeing an increased use of flows and then some centers are also starting to use shifts. We're gonna talk about the main center FireNet accounts transitioning to just a shared act inbox access today. It's a small enough group. I can answer your questions as well if you have specific ones. A reminder, the Microsoft Authenticator app is our recommended tool to authenticate in instead of the password. And we can share a link with you to help you get that set up if you don't already. And then the FireNet Dispatch account tracker, um, we are looking to automate that for an update. So when you put in for a delegation to one of your shared inboxes, Technically, we want you to go back and track that in your own center spreadsheet, but we're working on a kind of master where when that request comes in, it's added to the list for your centers. And if a person's removed, it's taken off from your list. So we're working on automating that. We do have a one page setup guidance that I will link you to today. And just a reminder, each Dispatch Center should have a Microsoft team and a SharePoint and then a shared inbox. And then some also have expanded. So if your center doesn't have those things, we do want you to get set up with those. That's our really the, the baseline for how folks are set up. OneDrive in the dispatch space, really the only time it should be used is if it has to be when data is getting moved off of SharePoint to its final location. Uh, otherwise, we steer clear of that as we have issues with teams being deleted and the syncing. Um, so that's not a tool that we are encouraging users to use right now. And then group forms versus uh, individual forms. That's one with this community as we do see an increased use, to, use of flows. Just a reminder that group forms, when you go into the forms app, uh, you kind of see a, a mix, but if you scroll to the bottom, there is a group form space and we can look at that when we demo after. Uh, so you do want, if you want other people to be able to access them and it not just to be your own, uh, then that's where you want to move it. And if you do want to copy for yourself, you can always start in your named account and then you can move it over there. Um, so just a mention of that as we, you know, if somebody leaves the center, or there's, there's transition, you don't want that form to live under your account. You want it to live in that group form space. Okay, FireNet accounts. So we do have a new cheat sheet that I can link for you. So if you want to print that out, I had settings right on this. If you just can make sure you're on mute. Oh. Account setup cheat sheet. So we have a one pager. If you want to put this up in your center, 
um, <clears throat> we really want to get this down. Now that we're transitioning away from signing into a main account, you want to be ready to request an account and each step that you have to follow along the way. So that is set up seamlessly for you. So requesting a named account, we have a few different things that a few different use cases here. So your federal users, they just have to go in and there's the FireNet request form. Your non-federal users have a few extra steps. And this is usually where we see folks saying, I emailed, but I didn't hear anything back. It's because you didn't complete all the steps. So when you request an account, the non-federal users, they also have to do the, the FISA security training. Go to the website for that. Of requesting an account, non-federal users. This is really important because we get folks, we just do step one right here. They don't actually do step two and three, which are the other baseline steps. So the Forest Service USDA online security training, that is our recommended, that one's a little bit quicker. You end up with a certificate at the end. This certificate then needs to be sent to your sponsor. So usually it's dispatch center manager or somebody that's kind of use, uh, managing the fire net space. So that sponsor um, will then go to the sponsor and affiliate page and you can cut and paste the description right here, right from the website. And then you can paste it in with your specifics for your dispatch center um, and which, which position they're in. So you just basically fill in, fill in the blanks there. It's just letting us know that it's a dispatcher essentially. If it's an IMT, they'll usually say um, what their position is there. So there's guidance on sponsoring an affiliate. So if you're ready for this, you know, so somebody comes into your center, they don't have an account. You're like, hey, can you complete this form? Okay, they complete the form. Can you do this training? They send you the cert, you send it into us. So let's think about the, the use case that the person's there and you, we need to get them in and we're, we're not sharing our main account. So we want you to email the FireNet admin as is directed on the website. And we also want you to include the incident help desk. So the incident help desk is basically works dispatch hours. <laughs> so if you're working, then the incident help desk is being monitored essentially. So you wanna CC them and then we can work to get that account set up. So we are prioritizing. When the user is requesting an account, the other place that we see some holdup is if they put the wrong assignment. So if the user needs to put dispatch center staff, so you have somebody in your center that needs an account. If they put dispatch center staff in your center, then they're gonna be created really quickly. Um, if they put other and something else, then um, we may not know what they are, their position. So it, it doesn't it doesn't get created as quickly or it doesn't get created at all. So you just want to make sure they're selecting these steps when they are requesting their account. All right, are there any? any account questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. We do have Lisa Sadowski on with us today. So she can also answer questions as I go. All right, so everybody has an account. Uh, now we have the dispatch center set up. We actually need to update this slide, but we have, we have one steward. We have the main dispatch center shared inbox. We have Microsoft Teams SharePoint and expanded shared inbox. So essentially, if, if we have a bunch of users, this could be for dispatch or expanded now. There's a bunch of users here. You're signing into your named account, first name, underscore, last name at FireNet, and you're actually accessing expanded, the main shared in Microsoft Teams SharePoint. And these are all managed separately. So they're not managed together. The image mentioned steward. So what's a steward? <laughs> this name's been around for us, for, I think, since... FireNet start, started. So in the past, it was the person that managed the main center account. As we've migrated over to O365, that's changed. So currently a steward is somebody that can request access to their, so it still includes, it's always the person that's still, the person that could originally sign into the main account. 
But now this person is also requesting delegates that they want people to access their shared inbox. And that's, a, that's what I was gonna mention on that account request. Uh, after you're requesting the account and it's set up, you have to ask for delegation. So that's that final step, which, which leads us here. So the stewards are, we have, we're getting more and more stewards because if the main center, you know, if the center manager's out, somebody else is gonna have to request delegation if somebody's at your center. So we do have a list of stewards and the, the folks that are also additional stewards that can ask for request. <clears throat> As the program evolves, these people are also ending up in other groups. So with because we don't have the main account anymore, we what we have is we have a security enabled flows group that these stewards will also be added to and we have an archive group. The flows group is useful because you don't have a person building an account a flow for example if you're using that under the main account. It's being built under somebody managing it and then this flow group is added as an owner. And then everybody in the flow group also gets uh, access to that flow. The archive group, essentially, it's just like whatever the main dispatch center account used to have access to. The archive group will be made up of our stewards. And then when an incident, incident's over in the main dispatch center <clears throat> is added back, it's the archive group that is added back and those users will be able to manage the space. So stewards, they have a, um, it's good if stewards are up to date on what's going on in FireNet and pretty much are managing the FireNet experience. Dwayne, if you ask us, uh, you can ask FireNet support who your stewards are and they can give you a list. So for expanded dispatch, just for a use case there, um, named FireNet accounts are used. So we did away with the temporary account, which is where temporary accounts used to be added here. I just did another training, so I forget if I mentioned um, mentioned it here, but uh, temporary accounts, they were kind of just cleaning themselves up. So, and they were just an account essentially. So we just have regular, <clears throat> we have a named account and then you could have a guest member. So your expanded will be uh, requesting that account just as a regular account in case you um, are confused from anything in the past. It used to have some different selections, but it's pretty clean cut. They're just asking um, and you can definitely, this slide will be shared in case you wanna share it with people to make sure they're requesting an account appropriately. So then that expanded dispatcher, um, they have their account and then this is how they get into Microsoft Teams and SharePoint and shared inboxes. If you had somebody that needed to access just the Microsoft Teams or SharePoint, um, they could just be added with any email address. In the dispatch center space, we're really set up with the shared inbox um, kind of model. So users usually will need a named account. So we are aware of these requests, as I mentioned, and they will be expedited. So main account transition, I'm not sure how many stewards we actually have on the call. We have Dwayne as a steward. So you're the folks that are gonna be managing this. We could also have some flow experts on the call. So the main accounts are transitioning from just being an account you sign into to now they're just gonna be a shared inbox. So users no longer sign into these accounts. You have a named account. What does this mean for you? So I, I don't know if we're about a third through with transitioning. So we do have folks that have been transitioned. We started with the folks who uh, had a little bit of data, maybe in OneDrive and then ones that had uh, forms that needed to be updated and then flows. So what you need to make sure on your center is that any OneDrive data is moved over to Microsoft Teams slash SharePoint, that your forms are moved to group forms and that flows are shared with your SE flow group. Um, so the SE flow groups are kind of being created as the users get notification that they're in our next phase. So if you don't have one of these groups yet and you do have flows and you're looking to get that get them transitioned, your season hasn't started, you can reach out to us for that to be uh, for that to be created. And let me just uh, jump over here so I can show you where this is. So main dispatch center transition. 
So here it's a helpful document. If you have questions on forms, um, flows and forms transition on the website under the dispatch transition, uh, there's a document here that will help you with that. All right, so we have a use case here. So a dispatcher um, with no FireNet account set up um, comes into your a center. So step one, we need them to request an account. ABC, if they are an affiliate. Step two, the account's created. And then step three, you have to request delegation. Um, and then step four is on our part where we send out an email. So the step three, it's best if once the account's created that you ask for delegation. Um, if you're just trying to do everything at once, you could ask for the delegation. If you get a bounce back saying the account's not created, you could just let support know that that you know it's being processed uh, and then they'll really be ready to delegate. Um, but just make sure you're doing that third step as well. So you can get them into your shared inbox right away. We try to keep tabs and, and help that, um, make that happen as quick as possible. Uh, Office Dispatch Center tracking sheet updates. Uh, so we have been phasing away from the Dispatch Center tracking sheets. Uh, hopefully with the automation of delegates and tracking that, uh, we won't need them at all. They are good for a few things. So if you, when we had people that were just new to FireNet, you could track who had a FireNet account. Currently, you can see who, if you keep it updated, you can see who has access to your shared inbox and your expanded inbox. If you're not sure right now who has access, you can email FireNet support and they can give you a rundown of who has access to your shared inbox. They were updated in 2021. Some have been updated if they ask, but those are still there um, for you to kind of keep tabs on your center. All right, let's go into setup. So, but we have the account. We're working in expanded. We're working in main. So now we need to go in and actually work in the space. So we're going to be in Microsoft Teams and SharePoint. <clears throat> so this is a big one. Just because you have somebody delegated to your inbox or just because somebody's on your Microsoft team, there's no crossover. So you have to request that they're delegated and then you also have to add them to your Microsoft team. This is a visual of Teams versus SharePoint. So the dispatch space is a little bit different. This is an incident team example, but we do encourage in the dispatch space, if you can name your channels with the word channel, it's helpful because then you know what is going on in SharePoint. So in this example, anything that happens within any of these folders is gonna, is gonna populate over here in Microsoft. So these, these match. We did find out in our feedback about, our users are about 50-50, 50% in Microsoft Teams and 50% in SharePoint. So what you don't wanna do is build anything under documents right here, because if, if you end up with a folder structure under documents in SharePoint, your Microsoft Teams users aren't gonna see that. So you wanna make sure you're working within a, within a folder. So you, you add, if you add any more channels, and um, we do recommend, you know, you put the, the underscore channel on and that's super helpful. <clears throat> so there is a specific Microsoft Teams training. So we can link and we'll look at our training space on the website at the end of the call. Organized by channels, we talked about it reflecting in SharePoint. And then in Microsoft Teams, we have a few other things. So these are some that are actually starting to be used by the dispatch space more. So you can build a planner into Microsoft Teams. We have folks um, starting to use shifts in the dispatch center space. So we'll talk about quick help later, um, but shifts is one that we've assigned to our dispatch community. And then only key and core dispatch center should be added to this team. So if you have a folder that uh, you need people to have access to, but you don't want them to come into your entire team, then you can just create a folder in SharePoint 
somewhere under a channel. Uh, and then you can share that out and invite people to that folder. So just a reminder, because you do have, most centers have one dispatch center slash SharePoint, you only really want your key people in your team. Otherwise you wanna share out from SharePoint. And then once a channel's created, we don't recommend changing it. If there's nothing in there really, if it's just files, you'll be okay as long as you check your link. So if you have like different things connected to the link in SharePoint, it can end up changing, the name can end up impacting things. So if you have a lot of stuff built out within a channel, I definitely do not recommend changing it. SharePoint training, that's the other tool that we're gonna use once we get in the system here, and we will be going in in our Chrome browser. So there is a link to the full SharePoint training, but just a few things, things to note. We tend to use SharePoint as to manage files and folders. Uh, so I tend to go into Microsoft Teams to start and then I'll like jump over to SharePoint. If I have to share a link, if I have to drag information around, we are seeing Microsoft Teams is kind of evolving and it's starting to have more features like SharePoint, but we do still go there for, for um, file management. So accessing FireNet, how are we gonna get into all these tools? So we're gonna use a Chrome browser and I will show you here. So I'm gonna come here. So you see my Chrome browser right here and you see that little panda bear up in the right. This is my presentation browser. And I'm gonna show you how we can add more browsers. So I'm gonna click here. So I click on the panda and then you can actually see all my other profiles in Chrome. So I would come down here and click add. So now I'm gonna sign in. I'm gonna continue without an account. This doesn't need to connect to anything Google. And then I'm gonna create a desktop shortcut. So I do want that to be checked. I'm gonna create an image because this will make it easy for me to find where's FireNet. So if you're doing stuff, something on a BLM or a USDA forest service account, you wanna keep that profile separate. So I'm gonna pick something that makes me think of FireNet, something awesome like sushi. And then I'm probably gonna call it FireNet browser. Never actually selected sushi, so this is exciting. I'm gonna click done. And then you're gonna see on the bottom, I have my little sushi icon. So when I need to go do FireNet, I'm gonna pop over there. I'm only ever gonna sign into FireNet here. So if I go to office.com, I'm not putting in my DOI email address and I'm not putting in a USJ Forest Service email address. I'm putting in my FireNet email address. So I go to office.com and then I'm gonna sign in with my FireNet email address. This creates any confusion. So when you need to jump around, if you have to go back to your agency account, you just go to that browser. So this is the best way to get set up and we see the cleanest results. So we talked about the Microsoft Teams and SharePoint and delegation. So now we're gonna look where we access all of those things. So when you are, accessing a shared inbox. We're gonna sign into my, so we had that, that sushi browser, we're gonna go to office.com and we're gonna get these options over here. So I'm gonna click Outlook. So I'm signing into my named account. I'm opening Outlook and then I'm gonna come over here on the right. And this is actually good that this just showed it this issue. Um, if you saw, if you see, I'm scrolled down a little bit. So my, uh, Microsoft has been doing this in the browser. You have to scroll up to get to your little, uh, to get to your letters, which is where we open our shared inbox from. So just a little note, we've been seeing that. And then I just say, open another shared inbox. And now I'm just gonna type in the five letters at firenet.gov. And it's gonna open that shared inbox that I was delegated to. So coming back to my home screen, and I always keep office.com open so I can kind of bounce around to different things. So next I'm gonna go to Microsoft Teams. So if I have to come in and come to a team, here I'm on Microsoft Teams. 
And here you have your chat, your team, your calls. So here's where you manage everything else. And as I mentioned, I will go into, uh, let me just go into one team. There is a training that's in depth on teams, but I'll just give you a quick dispatch center setup example here. So this is just an example, as I mentioned, how you can build different things in. So if this one has a planner, a calendar, so you can build different things in, and then you can chat per channel. So it's up to you how you set this up. This is an example with expanded dispatch channel, daily log channel. So this is where everybody gets everybody gets access to this. So for example, if you don't want all your expanded dispatchers to have access to everything, um, you could uh, set it up in an expanded folder in SharePoint and they could work out of that if you don't need them to have access to chat. We do hope to see increased usage of chats per the channel because that is a beneficial tool. Uh, just a reminder when adding members or uh, to your team, we wanna add members, not um, owners. So you wanna make sure that you have the most control of your team because you can delete the team if you are an owner. So just make sure you're limiting who uh, is in that role. Let's see, post incident. So post incident, I guess that would be our, this is kind of our grayest area. And this is where you're gonna have some changes that we mentioned when we were talking about stewards. So post incident, the IMT that leaves has a host unit, uh, two things. There's a host unit tab, and there's also a spot in the FireNet tracker for and I'm going to show you that for the local dispatching units fire net email address. So once in a while, you might get somebody asking for access to something and you're like, that's not my incident. Sometimes the five letters don't ask and we try to figure it out on our end. Um, so we do have when the first person on the incident uh, would fill out that dispatch center fire net email. So we will have that hopefully and then that'll help us get the email right. So once this is updated, the host contacts say they're in there finishing things up and then they're done. Technically the dispatch center is then managing this Microsoft team space. So your archive group will be added. So if we have Dwayne and Lisa kind of as the stewards of the center, then you will then end up seeing the incident team and you would be managing it from your named account. It would have access to that incident. So once you have access, first what you wanna do is you wanna clean up the space. So let's go see if we got anybody in this team. We wanna manage membership. So some of my bigger centers, I don't know if they're on the call, but if you like have like 400 people on the Microsoft team, you know, you want to get this cleaned up. So you just come in and you click manage team, and then you're just going to start to X out and you're going to remove people. If somebody needs access back, you can just add them back. When an incident's over, if they do come to the incident help desk to be added back, once it's over and it's managed by you, we will reach out to you and either send the person to you to have you add them, or if you need help, we can help with your permission, we can add them. So. So either way, but it's, but it's yours for approval. Um, that's then basically your space to manage. Um, and you do wanna clean it up. <clears throat> Once it's back to you, I would clean it up right away. You can always add people back if you need to, but everybody still has access to all the data, meaning they can also edit it. So you wanna get that cleaned up. And just a note, I was reading one of the questions. Um, when I go to the other mailbox, am I allowed to access to the accounts? So they're completely separate. So when you're in the mailbox, when you're delegated access to the mailbox, that's one thing. Like, so for example, I'm delegated to FireNet support, but this is not a team called FireNet support that I work in. This is, um, it's just an inbox that I'm delegated to. So I can come here. So they're not connected at all. Great question.
All right, the one other thing that this community has reached out uh, is for guidance on how to move data from, or I should say copy data from FireNet to its local storage place. So we do have two documents that we're working in right now, kind of trying to merge them to best practices to help you get that data off, um, copied from FireNet into your record retention space, depending which agency you are. Just a reminder where the host unit contact is updated. We talked about removing. There are a few slides kind of on this process, a few, a few pages on our website. So there's the FireNet incident lifecycle, incident closeout, and then post incident management. So you're welcome to visit those on our website. For training information, so I talked a little bit about Teams today. I talked a little bit about SharePoint. If you really want to get in depth, the trainings are on our website uh, right here under Microsoft Teams and then SharePoint. Let me see. One thing that, let me see if I have it on a slide. One thing that we do see in centers is um, SharePoint. Uh, anyone can view links. So let me show you that. And this is on the training as well, but I just want to give you a look. Uh, this is a one, this is actually a one page document that's helpful uh, to print out. We just need to do an update for it. This is on the website too. I was just looking for whatever I could share with you. So in SharePoint, I'm going to come here and say this is my, okay, let me go into my, um, I'm going to go into my actual dispatch center setup one. So for anybody new that isn't following along right now, you definitely want to jump on the Microsoft Teams and SharePoint training, but I'm just going to go to general and files. And this is usually how I get to SharePoint. I tend not to go in directly from SharePoint. I do have it bookmarked, which I, if you work from it, I recommend, but otherwise I'm just gonna come here and open in SharePoint. So the biggest thing we see from dispatch centers is use of anybody can view links. So if something has to be updated on a website, for example, we wanna come and manage the access. And this is something that other center, other agencies don't have. So in uh, SharePoint, I can select, uh, in FireNet, I can select so anyone with the link can view. So if I select this link, I can now have a document that, uh, or folder that I'm sharing out that anybody with the link can access it. So you could post it on your website, for example. We want to make sure you're posting the correct link, though. So sometimes we'll have somebody, sh these are actually, these actually end up with different links. So if I apply, so that just created a link. And then if I come in and I share, um, if say if I want to invite somebody to edit, it comes up with another link. You can then come in here and you'll see a list of how different links have been shared. You just want to make sure anyone with the link can view is the one that you're using, because if an email gets forwarded, something gets posted and then the person doesn't have access, it's usually the wrong link that was sent or they're trying to access it in a USDA uh, Forest Service browser and that's kind of acting as a bully. Um, so that's one of the biggest kind of, uh, one of the pain points that we see from dispatch center uses in SharePoint. In addition for training, we got some, we got some super users here. Uh, we have Quick Help this year. So this is a tool that is part, uh, is part of Microsoft Office 365. It's one of the apps. So if you go to office.com that we looked at, you can just go ahead and, and click Quick Help. This is going to bring you to all kinds of different trainings and they're quick, short trainings on different applications. So we're going to look at the ones that were assigned to the dispatch community and we can I can post this link right in here if you haven't joined this you want to join this you want it with your FireNet account you want to join this group when you join this group uh, shifts uh, for frontline managers and SharePoint team sites are going to be the courses that are highlighted and then once you do those courses you can get a dispatch badge so as different tools start to evolve and are used in the dispatch space, they'll then be assigned uh, to
two folks in this dispatch group. So if you know leadership, this um, you know GAC dispatch leadership comes comes to us and says, "Hey, we're using this tool. Could you apply it to their courses?" Then we can absolutely apply it to the courses. So once we start to identify things that our users are taking advantage of, we can go ahead and uh, start to explore some of the training. So the quick help badges we had dispatch Dynamo SharePoint site and then dispatch Dynamo Shifts, which one of them you got eleven badges with it, and then the other you got eight as well as the Nifty FireNet badge. So we had some top earners for this training. So they earned tacos, virtual tacos, Virginia, Rigoberto, Ginger, Amanda, Angela. Oh, the star means you also got uh, the next badge. So you're double badge earners. Angela, Faith, Valerie, Michelle, and Jessica. And then for our shifts, so if you're curious what shifts are doing, we have Ginger, Angela, Faith, and Valerie. So I do know, I think Northern Rockies is using the shifts tool. We are looking to, we have a few more trainings left to set up uh, for Microsoft Teams meeting. And we did hope to have a shifts one that we haven't gotten scheduled, but we do wanna start to share how different centers are using some of the tools. All right, I wanna make sure I am answering all your questions and I want to go to our training page one last time. We haven't talked about flows too much. Do we have anybody? You can uh, you can put a clap or a heart if you're using flows yet. We do have a dispatch center specific example for flows. So if you go under training and you're curious how dispatch centers are using flows, then we have our dispatch center highlights. So we had Amanda Hammond on with us. I'll post this link here as well directly. So this is a great training on a way that dispatch centers are using flows. Uh, flows are challenging. So if you do jump on that training, uh, you do need somebody really technical in your center to use a flow, but they do help automate things. We are working on creating more of a standard. So you don't have to be the brain behind the flow, but you can go in and <clears throat> basically plug in your information. So we are looking to start to standardize more flows and working with um, GAC leadership, uh, center manager leadership uh, to start to identify flows that would be more standardized. And then we could put them into a template and you could plug into your information. So if you want to learn a little bit more about flows, you would do so there. Next up, I wanted to show you the forms thing because this community is heavy on the forms usage. So when you create a new form by default, it's going to add it to your individual account. So you can see my name, um, things that are under my named account, or you can see things that are in a group. So if you scroll all the way down, you can see your group. So you'll see your dispatch center and then you can see your forms and see create new group form. So one thing with forms is anybody can change it. So if you are creating like this master form, I would actually recommend creating it in your account. And then you can come and you can click the three dots here. And then I'm gonna copy it. So I have a copy and then I'm gonna move it. And when I click move, I'm gonna see the groups that are tied to my Microsoft Teams SharePoints that I'm part of, and it's gonna move it to a group form. So that's just a little note um, as the, depending on how many forms you have, my groups gets pushed way down to the bottom. Do we have any of the taco earners on the call today? All right, let's jump into some questions and kind of keep driving around the website and as needed so you can see where it is hands on. We talked about stewards and who they are. And if you have a question on who's your steward now, we can also give you an update. We talked about Chrome being the place to go. We do have some agencies that are starting to go over to Edge. We have tried we have tried it. I think well, every year we try it. And then we end up with something funky where it's not working the way we want it to. And we end up back in Chrome. So we are still in Chrome and it works really well to manage those profiles. Looks like somebody else prefers Edge. 
the biggest thing is having separate environments. You can keep FireNet and Chrome and do your other things in Edge and IROC. Next question, when I go to the other mailbox, am I allowed access to the accounts, Teams and SharePoint files? We talked about how those are separate. So as a steward, you know, most likely you're the one that's gonna be adding the person to the Microsoft team in SharePoint and you're the, you're the one that's gonna be putting in that delegation request. So if I come to the homepage, on the homepage we have Sharebox, Shared Inbox Delegation Request. And this is where I'm gonna say who needs to have access. So even if, so if you're not the steward, then you wanna ask your center manager, assistant center manager, you need to be added to the Microsoft team, SharePoint, and you need delegation set up. So those are the two things that you need. Next question. Lisa covered that too. Oh yeah, and Joseph mentioned how he uses different browsers. Um, so I have some different looks. So you'll see how we do it in FireNet. So I'm gonna go over to my actual FireNet. Do I have my inboxes open? So I'm gonna go to my actual account now. I mentioned I always have office.com open and I have Outlook. I think I had this somewhere else, but I know blue is my inbox, which mostly is I'd like access to. Um, so that's one we don't wanna use. So go to FireNet support if you need something. Um, open inbox. So I'm gonna go to FireNet support. And I know FireNet support is orange. So just to note, um, this is this is shared inbox management, so less less profile management and more shared inbox management. <clears throat> but if you have expanded and you're regular and then you have an agency, so you could also end up very much with this use case in the dispatch space, incident help desk. And I know incident help desk is green. So this is how we're bouncing around all day. So I'm going to either be in my named account, I'm going to be in support or incident help desk. So that's my fire net world. And then down here, the little elephant, um, you know, I would go to my, uh, I have like a different background. I like, like Legos on my Outlook account. Um, so that just kind of helps me get set up and separated. Great ideas. Next question. So the center I worked for last year had issues with the sharing links with anyone. It turned out to be a Microsoft issue. Do we know if this issue is fixed? So I have never actually seen a Microsoft issue with the share with anyone's link. Um, I did see one where they thought it was a Microsoft issue, but it was the link was forwarded from an email that had been shared with a certain person a certain way. So I've seen that error. And then I've seen where it's a FireNet link that says anyone can view on the website. And then um, I get a permissions error. So where we'd see that the most common times is a USDA Forest Service person. And if you've accessed your, your Forest Service account from that email, even though it's set or that, so if you're in that browser, right? And you're on that, your website and your dispatch center website and you click on the link, it would then um, you could then get a permission error, even though it is set so anyone can view. So that would be the second thing that I've seen. Um, the last thing would be to do a fresh link just to, just to make sure everything's working. But those are kind of the workarounds for that. Next question. As we move away from fully licensed account, I know we're also losing. So distribution lists, um, Distribution lists, we don't actually have a lot of people using distribution lists. Um, so the, the few folks that we do have using them, we do hope to eventually phase those out. So you could manage your own distro lists in, uh, in FireNet with Google. Uh, in Microsoft 365, it's an admin thing and there's a, there's a little bit of more work behind it. So what we have right now on our website is a contact list. So we encourage you to use a contacts list. So under getting started, 
it's under our how to guide. So I'm going to go to creating large contact list. So this will show you how to create a contact list. And I think it actually has the CSV file. It should anyways. So there's a CSV file that you can upload. I think it links to it in here. Um, you put in your own information and then you can upload that contact list. Um, here it is. So that's the workaround um, for, because you're importing your contacts, that's a workaround for the distro list. Um, we do have teams do come with a group, um, but currently they're not really attached to the Microsoft team. So that is something that we're looking into. Megan's next question, is it possible to use a group um, form in a flow? Yeah, so Megan, you actually, you wanna use a group form because then it's not tied to your account. The one thing to note when using a group form in a flow is the dropdown is gonna be a little bit different. So in your Power Automate, um, when you're building your steps, if you have it selective, if the command that you're calling is for a flow attached to your account, you're gonna have a dropdown and you can just choose your flow that's in your account. If you have it pointing to a group form, you're gonna need the flow ID. And that's the one thing that's different, but we actually encourage you, like keep a copy in your own account, but copy that form over to group forms. And we heavily encourage using that because then it just doesn't live under your account. So if I go to form, I want to pick up the form ID if I'm using a group form. So I'm going to come here. Here's my untitled form. And then you'll see up here in the URL, see ID right here. So I'm going to pick up the form ID. And that's what I'm going to, I'm going to use the whole ID. And we actually have that step on the website under information and main dispatch center account transition in this flows and forms document. Let me just paste that in here so it's there for you. So for example, that's set so anybody can view. So if you're working in Forest Service USDA, there is a chance that you'll click on that and it won't work. It is set so anybody can view if it's on our website. Um, so from here, this does talk about the ID a little bit. So if you wanted some more information, um, that link would be helpful. Next question, how well does FireNet Teams play with Chrome Mobile? For example, if network goes down, it may have to send a dispatcher out with a backup radio console. So um, I think it depends on what you're sending them out with as far as a smartphone or tablet. So is it an agency one? Is it not? So we have run into the issue where some agencies, uh, if it's the agency device, it only lets you have one Microsoft 365 account. So it, so that would be like your DOI or your Forest Service account, and it doesn't always let you add one. Um, so depending on the app, so Lisa and I have played around with this a little bit where um, like on our personal devices, you can download Teams uh, and then like, from, you know, it's just an app on your phone and you can access it from there. Um, the one thing, some, once in a while we have people that, um, if they can't edit it on their smartphone or tablet, like you can't edit an Excel spreadsheet or something, you can just reach out to the help desk and it's something that we can fix to help that. Um, so it kind of depends on the device, um, but it can be done. We are looking to grow our um, we don't have a mobile support team, but we are looking to grow support in that area. Currently, we have, we do have in our um, user guides, there is a section in the FireNet user guide. There is a section on mobile access, just to give you an idea. Um, so you can check that out as well. It does probably need to be updated, um, but that can just give you a little bit of guidance.
What else do we have for questions? It is a small group if you want the opportunity. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording. So we have a good solid recording.